Welcome to this module of the Simulation Video Lab series. In this lab, we're going to talk about uh, queuing systems and the analysis of queuing networks. As for the objectives for this lab, we are going to give a brief introduction to queuing systems and how they work. And we will talk about uh, the queuing formulas for uh, certain type, type of queuing systems, especially uh, MMC systems. Uh, we will talk about the assumptions and analysis of uh, Jackson networks. Um, finally, we will uh, work a queuing network problem by hand and we perform a what-if analysis using an Excel model of the same model. Um, and finally, we will use Simio and simulation to verify our queuing solution. And in this case, by verify, we're not trying to verify the queuing formula, but we're just trying to verify that our solution um, and calculations are actually cor correct. So uh, let's talk about the basics of queuing systems. So uh, we see queuing systems uh, in our everyday life. And when you go to a restaurant and you wait in a line to order your food, you're basically in a queuing system. So um, in any queuing system, we have entities. So these entities can be either uh, customers or uh, raw material in a manufacturing system or um, phone calls that are waiting to be answered by a clerk. Um, so these entities are basically competing for a resource, which is our server. So as you can see here, the square um, shape is basically our server. And uh, this rotated L is our queue where the line uh, is formed. So uh, we have an arrival process, which is a stochastic process. So for example, uh, our inter-arrival times can be exponentially distributed or uh, it can follow any other distribution. Um, the queue has a capacity. So can, uh, you can think of it as the capacity of a room where the line is formed or the capacity of the area uh, in front of the cash register in a restaurant. Um, the queue also has a discipline associated with it, um, which is the queue rule, basically. So uh, some of the common rules are uh, first in, first out, or uh, shortest processing time, or other queuing uh, rules that uh, we know. The server has uh, also its own properties. So we have basically the service times, which uh, are random variates, so our service process is a stochastic process as well. And we also have, may have multiple servers or multiple parallel servers in our um, station. And uh, we denote the capacity of the server uh, uh, with C. And finally, we have the departure process. So uh, parts are processed in the server and then they leave the system. So let's see how a queuing system works as entities arrive in the system and get processed. So, um, so in order to see the dynamics of the queuing system, I have my single server queuing system here. So I only have one unit of capacity, so I'm not able to process multiple entities at the same time. Um, and I have my timeline here, and I start my system at time zero. So at some point, our first entity is going to arrive, and I'm going to mark this uh, event as A1, which is uh, the arrival of the first entity. And from zero to the time that the arrival occurred, I have my first inter-arrival time. So I show it as um, IAT1, that is the first inter-arrival time. So when the first entity arrives, since we started with an empty system, our first entity can directly go to the server and it does not need to wait in any line. So the first entity, go, entity goes into the server and time evolves and at some point our second entity arrives and now since the server is busy, the second entity um, has to go to the queue and wait in the line. Um, time evolves and server uh, has finished processing the first entity so I mark this event as uh, completion one C1 and it, as you can see the service time that we observed for the first entity 
is the duration of time between the arrival of the first entity and the completion of service for the first entity. So I denote that as um, S1, that is the service time for the first entity. So now that the uh, server has finished processing the first entity, this entity will leave the system and the second entity will start its process. Again, time evolves and the second completion happens. So uh, the server has finished processing the second entity and the second entity leaves the system. And again, we, we end up with an empty system. The, uh, the third entity arrives at some point. Uh, and now since the system is empty, this entity will go into the server and begins its um, service. Time evolves. The fourth customer arrives and it needs to go to the uh, queue because the server is busy. Time evolves and server is still processing uh, entity 3. So entity 5 also needs to go to the um, queue and wait in the line to, to be processed. Now at some point uh, the server is done with processing the third entity. So completion three happens. And as you can see, I have the duration of time between A3 and C3, which is the service time of uh, the third entity. So now the third entity leaves the system because I'm using the FIFO or first in first out uh, rule. The fourth entity will go to the server and the fifth entity moves forward in the line. Completion of four occurs and the fourth entity leaves the system and finally the fifth entity will go into the server and begins its process and at some point uh, the server finishes processing the fifth entity and that entity will leave the system. So as you can see um, we basically uh, here in this slide mimic the behavior or dynamics of a, a single server queuing system so hopefully you guys have an idea of how these systems work. What I'd like to do here is to do a very quick review of the notations that we use and the queuing formula. So we have the Kendall's notation that basically has five parts. The first part is the arrival process. So we may have Markovian arrival process or other arrival uh, stochastic processes. The second uh, part uh, shows the service process. The third value represents the number of servers or number of parallel servers in our station or basically the capacity of our station. The fourth uh, component is the maximum number in system. So the default assumption is that it's infinity. So most of the times we don't uh, use it in the notation. And uh, finally, the fifth one is uh, the queuing discipline. So FIFO, last in, first out shortest processing time, and so on. Closed form solutions for the performance of the system have been de uh, developed for MMC systems. So in an MMC system, we have a Markovian arrival process. In other words, our inter-arrival times are exponentially distributed, or um, the arrivals, the number of arrivals per unit of time is uh, Poisson. We have Markovian service times, uh, Markovian uh, service process, basically suggests that our service times are exponentially distributed and we can have one or more parallel servers in our uh, queuing model. So um, our utilization is calculated as lambda over C times mu. Lambda is the arrival rate into the server and uh, the external arrival rate, I should say, and mu is our service rate. And as you can see, uh, formulas have been developed. Uh, the formulas seem fairly easy for uh, the MM1 system when we have only a single server, but uh, they seem a little bit more complicated for uh, the MMC systems, but as we will see uh, shortly, the calculations are pretty straightforward. Since the assumptions of an MMC in an MMC system are not true for most real systems, there are also formulas that have been developed for more realistic types of queuing systems. But before I talk about these, I should mention that most of these formulas are not exact. So these are approximation uh, uh, models. And as the complexity of the system increases, the accuracy 
of these approximation models um, decreases. So simulation uh, becomes a more favorable tool to perform the analysis for such systems. So let's talk about some of these extensions real quick. So uh, approximation formulas have been developed for GGC systems where we have general arrival and service distribution, so we're not limited to the exponential distribution. Uh, Multi-stage multi single product models are basically the ones where we have uh, GGC systems, so the departure from the, uh, in this example, the first server is not Poisson, so we need to model that in order to be able to uh, basically analyze the uh, performance of the second uh, server. Multi-product models have been developed. Um, different forms of batching um, are studied. And machine failures, again, uh, are very common in the real world. So models have been developed for that. And uh, finally, uh, WIP limiting and closed queuing networks have been also um, studied uh, in the queuing context. So the examples of these systems are different forms of Kanban manufacturing or buffered serial lines. If you would like to know more about these advanced queuing models and see some of their uh, some of their approximation formulas that have been developed, uh, you can find a video module on my YouTube channel. It's called Introduction to Advanced Queuing Models. Um, this video is, in fact, uh, part of a, a video module and queuing networks that was developed by Dr. Jeffrey Smith. And um, here is the link to, to that video module. So the QIC problem that we're going to um, solve in this lab uh, is shown in this picture. So we have our network here. We have the, how, the routing information and uh, the service information. Um, so we'll talk about the uh, parameters uh, as as we start solving the problem. Uh, as for the performance metrics, we're going to use typical uh, queuing uh, performance metrics like server utilizations, um, time in each station, number at each station, expected number in system, and expected time in system. Um, and we would also like to use um, Excel to perform what-if analysis to basically evaluate the performance of the system for different combinations of external arrival weights. So as you can see in this model we have two uh, external sources for the arrivals. We have lambda 1 and lambda 2. So we would like to see how the system behaves or performs under different values of lambda 1 and lambda 2. Before we do this, I would like to talk very briefly uh, about Jackson Network. So a Jackson Network basically has several properties. If uh, arrive, inter arrival times are independently and exponentially distributed, and service times are independently and exponentially distributed, and we have probabilistic routing and infinite queue capacities, and utilizations are strictly less than one for all of our servers, then we can say that we have a Jackson network. And the nice uh, property of the Jackson network is that for uh, basically analyzing this kind of system, we can simply analyze each uh, server individually and then aggregate our uh, results to find the system performance. What we're going to do next is to start solving our queuing network.